Got to give it up to the Bengals, man. Got to give props to the Bengals. You've been coming from a Ravens fan. and nothing but respect. Straight up. Just like that. Uh, Bengals, I expected them to win this game. I ain't expect them to win the game like that, but I did expect them to win this game. Um, I thought their offense was going to come into the Titans territory and just go off like crazy. I thought this was going to be one of them games, a high scoring game, at least from the Bengals, not from the Titans. Um, and if you would have told me going into this game, all right, the final score is going to be 19-16. I would have been like, mm, okay, well, I guess Titans made it a defensive game. All right, well, I, I guess they won. It's a low-scoring game. Okay, Tennessee got it. Nope. Nope. And this is how, like, how do you, what, nine sacks, right? Nine sacks. You're, if, if, if anybody tells you, if you knew going into a game, like, all right, especially this one, the score is going to be, nine, the final score is going to be 19-16. Joe Burrow is going to get sacked nine times and even have an interception. I don't, oh, yeah. Oh, oh Titan, Titans got that for sure. Ain't no way. Ain't nobody winning no game. They got sacked no nine times. Oh, no. Nah. Uh-uh. Wrong. Wrong. And the the costly turnovers end up killing the uh, the Titans. I mean, r at least Ryan Tannehill was straight up with you from the jump. Literally from the jump. Because he told you straight up, like, I am going to turn the ball over today. Just know that. Because the very first play... He came out and threw an interception. Now, I did like the play call, but you throw a pick that it was just a bad pick because you had you had to know like they were gonna uh, key in on Derrick Henry, especially him coming back. I mean, that place was going crazy when he came out the tunnel, and I you, you got to understand like Bengals know okay King Henry is back. We got to watch him, but he there were some times where he had some little spurts here, and there, but he didn't really look himself. He did not look himself, and I wonder if he was more detrimental than he was helpful uh, to the Tennessee Titans. Number seven, it, it was it was so weird because you see you, you saw the uh, the Titans with number seven. I want to say it's Foreman. This dude breaking off big runs here and there, and then the Titans like, oh no, we're not gonna run like when he broke off the big run. Then the very next play. Ryan Tannehill threw the pick. Now, I didn't even think that was such a bad throw. I thought more so than it being a bad pick on Tannehill, it was just a phenomenal play by Bengals uh, safety Mike Hilton. It was just a great play by him. Wasn't even a bad throw by Tannehill. Mike Hilton just made an insane play. But the last Tannehill interception, mm, which ended up being, and this is uh, two years in a row in the playoffs, where Tannehill throws an interception that seals the Titans' fate. And they'll be in the game. The game will be close, but yeah, man. Like last year, it was against Marcus Peters. And this year, uh, it was, I think Eli Apple got his hand in there and knocked it up. And then I forgot who came down with it on the Bengals' uh, defense. But wow. What a game. Bengals like, man, you know what? It's been 31 years. It's been 31 years. You know, uh, yeah, we, we got our first playoff win last week, and that was cool, but that's not enough. That's not enough. That's not it. We want more. So they, they go after 31 years. They go win a playoff game, a close playoff game, and this is a very young team, by the way. And then they go top that off and, and win another close playoff game. And on top of that, this was an away game versus the number one seed in the AFC. And I know Bengals this season, they were 10 and 7. And so many people talked about, oh, man, they had a soft schedule. They had a weak schedule. They had a bad schedule. They ain't even play nobody. And I can understand that. But, okay, now you playing the best of the best in the AFC. This playoffs. They beat the Raiders, who did barely get in, get in, but they got in. Okay, cool. But now they beat the number one seed in the league, the number one seed. And shout out to the Titans because I heard them say, I know they had the, the, the most players injured this year. Um, now, as far as, we'll get into that later. But I know they had the most players injured this year. They said 91 different people played for the Titans at some point this year. I'm like, whoa, that's, whoa, that's like two full teams. Because uh, it's a 53-man roster. But anyway, um, for them to be able to have all those people hurt, obviously lost their heart and soul, Derrick Henry, for the longest 
um, lost Julio Jones a lot of times, even sometimes lost A.J. Brown. It was rough for the Titans. But for them to still get the number one seed, that's amazing. They let it be known, like, hey, no excuses. No excuses. <sighs> but this is just something that I was worried about for the Titans. I was worried that with them being a the number one seed, them having that bye week and the Bengals literally coming in on fire, coming in on fire, that it was just going to go against the Titans. It was not going to play in their favor. And it definitely didn't. Now, and, and you can't blame nobody on but the Titans, uh, but their, their offense on this one. Because their defense, they showed up. Now, they did have some lapses here and there. Because Jamar Chase, he took that, that little short play, took a little short catch, and he took it upfield. And he was making some play. Like, Jamar Chase, ah. Uh, can we say top five right now as a rookie? Can we say top five receiver in the league as a rookie? Can we? Of course, we got Devontae Adams. We got DeAndre. I don't even feel like getting in the top five list. We'll talk about that later. But this dude, like, he, that ain't no rookie. That, that ain't no rookie, man. This guy is a game changer. He's a playmaker. Even when Joe Burrow had thrown a pass to T. Higgins, T. Higgins caught it and fumbled it. It probably would have been ruled down. But when I saw that ball on the ground and I saw Jamal Chase pick it up, I said, like, oh, boy, he's about to scoop and score. It's about to be a scoop and score. Because this guy, like, he can just do so much from so little. He can take a small little play and turn it into something big just like that immediately. And I love how the Bengals, they see Jamal Chase is hot. I mean, he's been hot all season. But they see Jamal Chase is hot. And they're not like, oh, you know what? Take him out of the game. Oh, you know what? Let's not keep going to. No, they went right back to him. Like, there was, um, I think it was after that big catch. After that big catch, they were like, all right, Jamal Chase, end around. We're going to hand it off to Jamal Chase. So they hand it off to him. I'm like, whoa. And then, man, this is why, I, this is why you can't do nothing but respect the Bengals, man. Can't do nothing but respect them because of the, the smart aggression. Because Tannehill threw the pick. Wasn't that much time left. I think, was it 20 seconds? No, not 20 seconds. It might have been like four. I forgot how much time was left, but not much. Tannehill throws a pick. And I'm thinking, uh, are they going to play for overtime? Yeah, Bengals in decent field position, but they ain't too close. But all right, they came out throwing the ball. And who do you throw it to in that situation? Playmakers make plays. Joe Burrow threw it to none other than Jamar Chase. None other than Jamar Chase. And look what happened. He got them in field goal range. McPherson, who I want, I believe is a rookie. He has been clutch for them. He has been clutch. And now he kicked them to the AFC Championship. And on top of that, get this. The Bengals, said they just took out the number one seed in the AFC. They took them out. And now... Whoever wins between the Bills and the Chiefs, I'm pretty sure they got to travel to Cincinnati. I'm pretty sure. So, and, and regardless, if that's true or not, they took out the number one seed. Then they won two playoff games. They are Bengals. Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals are literally one game away from the Super Bowl. Cincinnati Bengals or one game away from playing in a Super Bowl. Who would have thought that this year? Who would have thought? And, and even plenty of Bengals fans. I'm sure there's plenty of Bengals fans who wouldn't have even thought. They, of course, would, would have won it. But if they would have sat down realistically and been like, oh, can we do it? Well, maybe there was some. Maybe they saw some flashes from what Joe Burrow did last year. It was like, man, we got Jamar Chase now. We got T. Higgins. We got Tyler Boyd. We got Usama. We got, we got Joe Mixon. We got a squad. And our offensive line, they all right. Who would have thought that they would be one game away from the Super Bowl? And, there, and, and I said this last week when they beat the Raiders. I said, who, who do they have to be afraid of in the AFC? And I know so many, some people say, oh, well, they got swept by the Browns. Browns beat them down both times. Yeah, they did. But look, look at this. They just beat the Titans. 
Who do they have to be afraid of in the AFC? They beat the Chiefs in, I think, week 16. They just beat the Raiders in the playoffs. They beat the Titans, the number one seed in the playoffs. Their momentum is just crazy right now. It's crazy. So whether the Chiefs win tomorrow, whether the Bills win tomorrow, the Bengals, they're going to bring it against either one of those two. And they just showed you like, hey, we could play in a shootout. Y'all want to do a shootout? Okay, we with that all day. Or, oh, oh y'all want to have a low-scoring defensive game? Okay, we can make that happen too. Oh, us being sacked nine times? Now, you, you can't keep having that happen now. But, oh, we got sacked nine times? Okay, cool, no problem. We'll still win. Oh, Joe Burrow going to throw an interception, his first interception since what they say, week 13 or week 11? One of those two. Even though that interception wasn't even his fault because it came off his running back's hands. But still, it goes on your record. And that, that, I know that got to be really annoying as a quarterback. When you throw a, a pass that's just fine and the receiver just drops it, tip drill. And that, oh, that, that interception, by the way, that was a close one. Oh, that was a close one. I think if they would have ruled that, and that's where the guy, where, where the, the running back, he dropped the ball and it went to the ground. And the Titans, the, the, their cornerback or safety, I don't know what he is, but he grabbed, the, he caught the ball as soon as it hit the ground. He like caught it simultaneously while it hit the ground and then he picked it up and then started running. And I think if they would have initially ruled it an incompletion, then it would have stayed an incompletion. But it was one of those plays where you just didn't know which way it was going to go. Uh, so they just like, you know what? We call the interception. We'll just leave the interception. And that'll be that. But this was a uh, cra crazy game. Crazy game. Again, congrats to all the Bengals fans. Um, man, <laughs> this is wild, man. Joe Burrow in his second year. Second year is playing in the AFC Championship game. Mm, 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 mm. The Bengals, they did a great job of surrounding Joe Burrow with talent, especially at the wide, really everywhere, really, but especially at the wide receiver position. This guy has so many options all over. Joe Mixon, he even got him a touchdown tonight. <laughs> he was like, hold up. Like, I'm tired of everybody talking about all the receivers. Don't forget about me. I was one of the top leading rushers in the league. Don't forget about me. And they, boy, they did their thing, man. So, again, congrats. Congrats to the Bengals. Um, and we're going to see who they end up playing next week in that AFC Championship. Wow. AFC Championship. The game to go to the Super Bowl. Bengals fans, I know they're going crazy right now. I saw a clip um, of Bengals fans outside of um, the stadium, Titan Stadium, like tailgate and they they showed up like crazy and i know it's it's a playoff game so i expect the opposing team to show up but they showed up like crazy like crazy and i was like i was just looking at the video like wow so they got it so and next week they could be showing up at home like crazy so you know that place for Bengals, that's going to be the, the loudest that Bengals fans have probably ever heard that stadium so if they play at the crib next week, oh, ooh, it's, it's going to be crazy there. I already know. So anyway, Team Keep It Clean, appreciate y'all. This was a great game. I know some people don't like the defensive games, low-scoring games, but I appreciate it. Probably because I'm a Ravens fan, but I appreciated it. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Just like it comes to the Titans when, when it comes to being in the playoffs now, I'm out.